We come to return all the glory to you, Lord God. We thank you for this day that we can all come together as a family, Father God, to just to rest in your arms and to hear what you have to say to us. Father, we thank you, Lord, for every family that's here. We thank you for every revelation, every word is going to come. It's not a time of sorrow, God, but it's a time of celebration. And while I was um, thinking of the celebration, the psalm came to me and it said that, sorry, that he shall be... She, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water mm. that bringeth forth his fruit in season. Mm. And if you look around here, you look at his children, mm. you see the fruit and you see that his leaves shall not wither. The, leaf, the leaves cannot wither because there's a generation that is there. So we give thanks to God for this generation that is left behind. Mm. He's left a legacy behind. And that's mm. why we give God praise. He didn't just die mm. and didn't go to rest, but he's left his, leg his legacy behind, which is his children mm. and his family and the rest of the generations to come so this is why we give god praise this is why we give god all the glory just for the the, the generation of families that are here mm. today mm. and just and then um i've been given a scripture by darren to read so i'm just going to read it and it's from joshua 3 four. just joshua 4 and it came to pass when all the people were cleaned passed over jordan that the lord spake unto joshua saying take you 12 men out of the people out of every tribe a man and command you them saying, take you hence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest stood firm, 12 stones, and you shall carry them over with you and leave them in the lodging place mm. where you shall lodge this night. Mm. Then Joshua called the 12 men who had prepared, who had prepared of the children of Israel out of every tribe, a man. And Joshua said unto them, pass over before the ark of the Lord your God in the midst of the Jordan and take you every man of you a stone upon his shoulder, shoulder, according to the number of tribes of children of Israel. This, that this may be a sign among you, that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, mm. saying, what do you mean by these stones? Then you shall answer them, that the waters of Jordan were cut off mm. before the ark of the covenant of the mm. Lord. Mm. When it passed over Jordan, and the waters of Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be a memorial unto the children of Israel mm. forever. And the children of Israel did so as Joshua commanded, mm. and took up twelve stones out of the midst of Jordan. Mm. And as the Lord spake unto Joshua, according to the number of tribes of the mm. children of Israel, and carried them over with them unto the place, where they lodged and laid them down there. And Joshua set up twelve stones in the midst of the in a place where the feet of the priests should bear the ark of the covenant and they are there unto this day for the priest shall bear the ark stood in the midst of the Jordan until things were finished that the Lord come greetings to us all as we are gathered here I think um, we are not here by surprise. We knew, and the Lord knew, this day will come when we gathered here. We gathered here before. We didn't expect to lay Jacob uh, at the time we laid him here. And we came again, and we came again, and we continue to come. But today is quite different from the other times that we met here. A special day to remember Jacob. Uh, I would like to play The Lord is My Shepherd before I. Uh, if you can please open for me um, Genesis chapter 35 verse 10 Genesis 35 verse 10 If we can sing along for those who can sing please The Lord is my shepherd
The first one we had the children of Israel being ordered by God to pick up 12 stones and these stones what were they for? It was mainly for their children so that they may tell them that this is what the Lord has done for us and we hear and we still know and maybe some of us endeavor to do good things so that we may leave uh, a legacy for our children so that they may follow suit to see this is what to say this is what my mom did this is what my brother did this is what my parents did so the same with god he reminded the children of israel the journey he took them through uh, from egypt and to the promised land some of whom never got to the promised land but along the way god was reminding them it wasn't by their own will or power or mighty it was because of the lord but so that God's legacy among the children of Israel will not fade away and be forgotten. He reminded them that you have to pick 12 stones. When you pick these stones and your children ask, how many times when our children ask us, why do you do this? Why is this here? Why has this happened? We must have an explanation. This is what has happened. And this is what the children of God were being reminded when Joshua was told, pick up 12 stones so that when your children ask remind them that the lord has delivered us yes. from the hands of the egyptians yes. the same there's quite a spiritual significance of stones in the bible if we read these stories of stones if we go to genesis 28 um, i think it's verse 5 we hear again jacob uh running away from his brother and he's sleeping in a very desolate place and he's laying his head on a stone and it was on that stone that he dreamt and saw angels going up and down and when he got up in the morning he anointed the stone and said in this place there is god hallelujah Amen. so there was quite uh there's quite a spiritual meaning in that but i want to deal with the one which i have just read from genesis uh, chapter 35 this is a story of Jacob and his two wives. As he was leaving Haran, going back to Canaan, uh, his two wives, Rachel, was pregnant. And when Rachel was pregnant, she gave birth along the way as they were going into Canaan. And he gave birth to a baby son, whom he called Benon. And the baby son is Joseph, to some of us who might not know. Mm -hmm. Joseph was born along the way as they were crossing over into Canaan. Mm -hmm. And Joseph did not know how his mom looks like. Maybe I might open wounds to some people here who maybe don't know who their moms or their fathers look like because they were born young. So Jacob bore that in mind. He said, if I just lay my wife here and we continue with our journey into Canaan, how would my children know where their mom is? Hallelujah. This is exactly what we are doing. This is the, sim the symbolism of our tombstones. When we lay tombstones, we are doing it for the generations to come. And we are doing it for the times to come. When we buried Jacob here, it was a plain space. I think there were a few graves here. Had we not done this, maybe some of us were standing on graves. Imagine if you come and it's plain. You don't even know where Jacob is. And when we lay stones, we are just saying the same we are remembering you, Jacob, and we know where you are laying. And when children come, generations to come, Jacob's uh, junior and uh, Tanya's children and children to come, they'll come here and say, this is where our grandfather is laid. So there is great significance in what we are doing today. We are not just gathered here to remember Jacob, but also to live a sign and symbolism of our love for Jacob. We are remembering Jacob with such deep love and we are doing something which is very very biblical not anything from Zimbabwe or from anywhere else this is biblical this is where Jacob is laying so as we remember Jacob we remember him with deep love with significance to say the Lord has ordered us to lay this stone so that when generations come why is this tombstone here this is where your grandfather is laid this is where your father is laid and this is where your husband is laid and this is where your son-in-law is laid and this is where your son is laid and this is where your brother is laid so we are all doing this in the name of love and knowing that god has guided us to this place to remember jacob with such such deep love and we count it a blessing there are some people who 
have been buried and we don't know where they are and we don't even recall what they have done to us because there is no symbolism or sign of where they are laid. So as we are gathered here, may God bless this place. As we remember and come again, maybe in 10, 20 years, we'll come to this place again and we'll see that this is where Jacob was laid in 2020, the COVID year. We wouldn't have been remembered this place if we had not come to put this stone on this place. So we want to remember Jacob with such deep love. And when our children asked us, it was that year when we had COVID, things were not very difficult for us. And this is where we lay Jacob. So our hearts must be comforted as we remember Psalm 23, the Lord is our shepherd. We laid Jacob three years ago, but our hearts are still bleeding. But we take joy knowing that the Lord is our shepherd. He comforts us. He walks with us. He, he, he looks us in the eye and say, it is well. We live in a time where David was going to shepherd the sheep, in a place where he was walking alone, in a place where there was no one to defend him. But he saw the challenges that he faced in that place. The same with us. The challenges we face in this world. Sometimes we cannot explain them for people to understand us. But we need God to be with us. David knew there's no one else who can comfort him and give him protection. It was only God. It's only God who can go with us in deep waters. It's only God who can go with us on top of the mountains. And it's only God who can go with us in the valley. So here we are being comforted. The Lord is our shepherd. As we put this stone, it's remembering the love of God. God is not unkind to us because he's taken Jacob from us. He is very kind to us. He answers prayers in very, very different ways. He answers prayers. Darren, you can come forward, please. He answered prayers in every way that we may not think. So we are here to gather, knowing that the Lord is our shepherd and he gives us comfort at all times. Our tables never lack, and our cups overflow with joy. When we say our cups overflow with joy, it is God's grace that keeps us going. The day when Jacob died, we never thought we would smile again, or we never thought we would laugh again, but God's grace keeps us going. Hallelujah. We want to give glory to God because we are here to remember the love of God and his power and uh, comfort that he brings to our lives. And I will leave um uh something that I want um, Mother Charlie to do for us. For those of us who don't speak, please help me understand. Um, Brother Signy, I would like you to translate this for me. Would you go ahead for me, please, Mother Charlie? Um, as Uncle Darren has said, um, he deeply wants to say a few words to all of us on behalf of the family, on behalf of Jake, but he wants it to be said in Shona. And these are his words in Shona. Zorora Murugare Jacob Gasa Baba Watanya Najmeng Husband Murume Wasandra Gasa. Uncle Sidney. Rest in perfect peace, eternal perfect peace, Uncle Jacob the husband of Sandra Gasa, the father 
of Tanya and Jermaine Gasser. Thank you. For those of you who don't understand Zimbabwean, if I got that right, is that right? Is that correct? Shona. Shona, sorry. Shona. So I'm just going to ask Reverend Winnie, where are you, please, now, if you may close off um, this session so they can, all of us here, just have our private reflection time now that it's the time that everybody can meet on this beautiful occasion often known as a sad occasion but for those of us who believe and understand the scriptures we know we shall meet once again soon if we trust and if we believe that the lord has called us to do his work just as jake and when he called him home reverend winnie I just want to give the vote of thanks. We lost our dearest husband, son, dad, brother, friend, colleague, at a time when it was really difficult, mm. a time of COVID. So one of the things that we realise now is that forever we need and are dependent on God's protection wherever we go. Mm. So I read the Psalm of David, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Now surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. So as we depart, Father God, we ask that we, we gain your traveling mercies for those of us that are physically going to our homes, wherever they may be. And though we weren't able to be here, all of us gathered when Jake was buried, we continue to ask for his traveling mercies for where he will dwell with you forever. We ask that for those that remain, you be with us, guide us and protect us, and nurture us in the love and knowledge that one day we will soon be again together. In the name of your Christ, thank Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. You mm -hmm. 